Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome back to my channel, My Loverlies. If you've never been here before, thank you so much for clicking on my video. I am so happy you found me. I do so hope that you will like and subscribe before you leave. Become part of the mama family. Mama's got your back, at least where makeup's concerned, and definitely when that makeup is cheap. Today is supposed to be New Makeup Monday, but I don't have any new makeup to share with you guys. So instead, we're going to do a chatty get ready with me. I haven't done one of these in absolute eons, so forgive me if I'm just a teeny tiny bit rusty. However, I do have a bunch to share with you guys, so I hope you are just as interested in a little bit of a gab sesh as you would be some new makeup. I know new makeup is always super, super fun, but next week I do have a really fantastic episode coming, so stay tuned for that. If a chatty get ready with me is not your speed, that is totally okay too. Feel free to exit now. Guys, I love you either way. If this one isn't for you, I will ch I will catch you at the next one either way. I do hope that you have just a little while to sit back, get comfy, get cozy, get you a big old glass of something to drink, maybe even do your makeup with me, and let's kind of gab away. I want to say it's been close to maybe six or eight months since I've done a chatty get ready with me. It's so crazy to think that my life has been so insane since then and so much has changed. Y'all, I almost feel like a completely different person. I'm another year closer to 40 now, which is insane too. I just, sometimes I look at myself in the mirror or especially I'll be at work and I'll see a younger person walk in the door and I'll be like, oh yeah, we're about the same age and I'll start talking to them. And then all of a sudden I'll get a yes ma'am <laughs> and I just get blown back and I'm just like, what just happened? Cause I'm 40 years old. But inside, I still feel like I'm 25. So I see a 25-year-old walk through the door, and I'm like, hey, hey, hey there, hey there, sister. How's it going? And she looks at me, and I'm just, I'm just an old lady standing behind a register. And I know that is how my son thinks of me, too, because sometimes I'll say things, and he just looks at me like, what in the world are you talking about? That's when I just hush up real quick and pretend I'm doing something else, because <laughs> I obviously don't know what I'm talking about. I was at work the other day and I was talking to uh, one of my friends at work. We're going to get into that in just a minute because work has been a little bit of a doozy. But I was talking to one of my friends at work and we were talking about getting older. And she's a little bit older than me. And we were talking about Botox because I found out that there is a place that does Botox kind of close to me. And I've never gotten any work done. And I'm thinking, you know, especially since I just had yet another birthday. I figured it was maybe time to start thinking about getting some Botox or some filler, something like that. I don't know. Just these lines on my forehead. Y'all, it does not matter how much money you spend on skincare. It doesn't matter how fantastic of a skincare routine you use. It might slow down the uh, ravages of time, but it's not going to stop them completely. And I see the effects on my face, especially like in the, the crow's feet and in the forehead. And I love my laugh lines and I love the lines on my face. I have more than earned every single one of them. But I am still, like I'm, I'm a little bit vain too and I definitely don't want to look old. Either way, I was talking to her about that and uh, she has gotten Botox before. And she sat there and she told me that she would have to pay f uh, per unit and she was like, usually people get around 40 units. And I was like, how much is that? And she was like, it's usually about $12 a unit. So that's like upwards of $300. And baby, I just don't, I don't have it. There is no way in the world that I could sit there and feel good about like $300 worth of stuff into my face. And then I'd probably have to go back in and do it again three months later. Because it only lasts like, what, three months? Fillers are a little bit of a different story. But she told me she went and got fillers in her lips one time and she said it was so incredibly painful. Mm, I have tattoos and I have piercings and needles don't really scare me all that much. But the thought of somebody poking a needle into my lips over and over and over again, mm, not, it doesn't like fill me with joy or anticipation. I am so curious about how some women go and get like Botox and filler done and like literally don't even think twice about it. I just, the pain tolerance has got to be exceptional. So anyway, she definitely has me double thinking my decisions and my goals. 
Speaking of goals, I have been on such a serious weight loss journey. I don't know if you can tell in my face, but I can see it. My double chin is starting to disappear. That makes me so very, very happy, y'all. I looked at a picture of myself. I took it maybe about mm, a year and a half ago, right? And I'm just all neck. Like this is where I hold most of my weight, that and my tummy. The tummy's getting smaller too. We're not there yet, but we're, we're, we're getting there. Y'all, work has been such a giant, giant help. And that's another big life update. So I am a professional chef. I have been cooking since I was like 16. I've been working in restaurants since I was like 12. My parents owned a restaurant when I was younger and it was great. I loved working in it. I've always loved being in the kitchen. I love cooking and feeding people. It's one of my favorite things on the planet. So why not make it a career, right? They say, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. Honey, let me tell you, I do enjoy cooking, but being in a kitchen is work. I don't care where you are. Anyway, before the pandemic, I was a chef. I was a breakfast chef at a bed and breakfast here. And the pandemic hit and we got shut down and I stopped working. And I stopped working for, I wanna say a good, I wanna say three and a half years, maybe even longer. And instead of getting up and going to work every day and being active and going uh, going into a kitchen and sweating my honey off, I sat in my house. I cooked for my, my husband and my child. I did laundry and I cleaned and I decorated my home. And basically I sat at my desk and really wasn't super active. So in that time, I packed on so much weight. I, I think I gained like 150 pounds in three years. And it's not even because I eat a ton, but it's just I was not being super active and I wasn't watching what I was eating either. And God bless my husband. I love that man more than I love anyone on this planet besides my son. I love that man. And he didn't say not a word to me. He never said, baby, ooh, are you maybe getting a little bit big? Maybe you want to start watching what you're eating. Maybe you need to get up and be a little He said not a freaking word to me. He sat there and he brought me home, he brought me home donuts and fudge and he brought me ice cream. And the man just plied me with all of my favorite things and let me balloon 150 pounds and loved me either way. But when it became, when it got time for me to get up and start going back to work and being active again, I realized just how out of shape I was. Actually, what really made me realize how out of shape I was, was we went to the mall and we live in absolutely the middle of nowhere and the, the nearest mall to us is I want to say at least an hour and a half drive so we went to the mall we don't needless to say we don't go very often so we went to the mall and I used to love going to the mall I am a shopper I am a shop shop shopper and walking around the mall going into all the different stores it's like one of my favorite things in the world we went to the mall and y'all I, from from the car to the entrance of the mall, I was already freaking out of breath. I was like, what in the world is going on with me? So then I realized like, I am just so out of shape. So then I was like, mm, we gotta start doing something about this. So then when it got time to me, for me to go back to work and I have to be on my feet for eight hours at a time, I just, I just genuinely realized I am so out of shape. I am so heavy. I need to do something about this. So I've been working for, I wanna say about three months, well, two months at this point. Absolutely love the job. I work at the gas station in town and it is not glamorous work by any means, but I love it so, so much. I am such a people person and I didn't realize how lonely I was. Like I was in my house 24 seven. I didn't speak to anybody but my son and my husband. I don't really have friends, things like that. Just, I was just very cloistered. I was in my house and that was my entire world. And as happy as I was, I didn't realize that I was just, I was, I was, what is that word? What is, I, I was conversation starved. I was just, I needed that interaction, right? So now that I'm working and I get to talk to like hundreds of people every single day, I am genuinely in a state of bliss all the time, as hard as, hard as it is, because it is hard. Uh, I just, I love it so, so much. But since I've started working, I've lost, I want to say almost like 50 pounds, which I'm so super happy about. I actually, I'm not, I'm not like putting pressure on myself about it because I feel like that's a good way to just make the whole experience a bad thing because I'm not trying to lose weight because I want to lose weight. I just want to be healthier. The next time I go to the mall, I do not want to have to sit and take a break. 
I don't want to be out of breath by the time I get to the mall doors. Like that's the goal, right? Basically, I just want to go spend money. But anyway, since I've started working, it's been great. I've lost 50 pounds. I can feel myself getting healthier. Like I go out and I make sure that I get my steps in every day. I don't count. It's like I was saying, this video is going to be so random. So I'm so sorry. It's going to be literally all over the place. I was saying that I don't weigh myself and I don't put pressure on myself when it comes to losing weight. I feel like when you put your pre put pressure on yourself and like set goals, like I want to I want to lose this amount of weight by this time period, I just feel like weight loss is not the same for everyone and the weight isn't going to come off exactly the way that you want it to. As long as it's coming off, slow and steady wins the race. So, I don't weigh myself very often. I weigh myself maybe once or twice a month, maybe sometimes once every couple of months if I feel like I'm not doing great. But I weighed myself the other day and I realized that I had lost another 18 pounds. And y'all, I was so freaking excited. I was so happy. I can see that my clothes are starting to fit a little bit better, which is so fantastic. I didn't realize that a lot of my clothes were just so tight. And this is another reason, like I know I was getting so very, very big. I am a jeans person. I absolutely adore blue jeans. From the time I could walk, I've been in blue jeans and tank tops. It's like my unofficial uniform. I cannot tell you when the last time I actually wore a pair of blue jeans was, just because I don't have any that fit. So I have been like the, the legging queen here recently, and I love them. They make my booty look good. They make my legs look good. So not mad about it, but I do miss my blue jeans. So I have told myself that as soon as I lose enough weight, I want to get down to like a size 24 because I'm a size 26 right now. So once I get to a size 24, then I will go out and I will buy myself one like really nice new pair of blue jeans. Super excited about that. Another reason, you know, I, mm, we're seeing a pattern here and that is just like I want to go shopping. That is a problem for me. Also, I've been working on that as well. I've been on a little bit of a no buy. Well, a big bit of a no buy. No buy. I've been trying to make sure that I'm not spending money on things that I don't need, especially when it comes to makeup and things like beauty related. Y'all, I have so much makeup. I have more than enough makeup to last multiple people, multiple lifetimes. Like there is no reason in the world for anyone to have so much makeup. I mean, it's one thing if you've got the money for it and it makes you happy, that's great. But I got to a point where I was spending money that I just didn't have and I was spending money that I didn't need to spend just because new things were coming out and I thought I had to have them. The no buy has actually been kind of fantastic because it's made me really dig into my collection and really just fall in love all over again with the things that I already have. And if you've noticed the last, I want to say a couple of months worth of New Makeup Mondays, I've been talking about things that I found in my collection. There's been a couple of newness things here and there but for the most part, I talk about things that I find on sale or things that I find at the discount store because y'all, if there is one thing that is for certain, it is that makeup, makeup brands will continue to release new products and people will continue to want to buy them. And quite honestly, there is no shortage of people out there reviewing brand new makeup products. Like I am positive you do not need yet another person reviewing up brand new makeup releases because there's a million and one of them doing that out there already. But if you're anything like me, I would so much rather go find hidden treasures at like the discount stores or the dollar store. You know what I mean? Like I don't necessarily need brand new releases to make me happy, but sometimes they are very, very nice. So we're not going to knock it. I very much enjoy like a brand new makeup product or a new release. Like the new makeup is just fantastic like it is it is what it is but not all of us have the money to go out there and do it over and over and over again i very recently just bought myself quite a big present i just i have been absolutely drooling over the adept cosmetics seahorse palette it is a it's a multi-chrome palette i did a whole video on it last week but i wanted this palette for absolutely forever and i finally went out and i saved up the money and I went and I purchased it. And y'all, that one palette made me so freaking happy. I used it on my eyes again today. I've been using it nonstop since I purchased it and it's delightful. And while it was indeed 
very, very expensive and probably an unnecessary purchase. I didn't feel as bad about it because I hadn't really bought anything new in the longest time. So it was kind of like, mm, I, w I waited for it, I worked for it, and it makes me super, super happy. I feel like things are so much better when you have to wait for them sometimes. Like instant gratification is fantastic too, but sometimes having to wait for something makes it that much better. And that seahorse palette has been my absolute everything here recently. I've also really been loving uh, pastels as well. It seems like I cannot get over a pastel eyeshadow look. Also, it has been so much fun to go to work and show off my eyeshadow. Like I know that might sound weird, but I don't always do a full face to go to work. Like later I go to work today and I'll have my full face done because I'm doing it with you guys now. But usually for the most part, all I will do is do an eyeshadow look and then I'll go to work and just have my eyes done. But I swear to you, I have people come in just to see what my eyeshadow looks like for the day. And it just gives me another reason. It's made me excited about makeup again. Cause y'all, I have been, I've been doing YouTube and the whole makeup thing for going on three years at this point. And as much as I love it, it's like I'm staring down the barrel of a very serious burnout, especially now that I'm working. So I'm trying to continue to do all of the things that I was doing before I went back to work, which is keeping the house clean, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're working 40 hours a week, plus keeping the house spotless and cooking every single night. And I work the night shift. So oftentimes I'll work from like the middle of the afternoon until almost midnight. So like I'm at work for a good long period of time. And then I come home and now that it's the summer and there is no bedtime, I'll get off work. And the first thing I'll do is come home and cook a full meal because my boys are hungry. So I have to feed them. I'm the mom, that's my job, right? So I'm refusing to compromise on anything. And I'm realizing that there just isn't enough time in the day to do everything that I feel like I'm supposed to be doing. So I'm supposed to keep the laundry done and the dishes done and I'm supposed to keep the house clean and I'm supposed to cook every night because I don't want my boys eating fast food all the time. So it's just, I'm, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself and it's nobody else doing it because nobody else is sitting here telling me you need to clean the house or you need to cook dinner. That is just me doing it to myself. And I feel like most of us, we do that to ourselves like on a daily basis. We have this set of rules that we make for ourselves and say, this is, this is what we have to do. This is the rules that we have to follow. If we don't do this, we're not doing our job. At least that's the way that I look at, I look at it. I am a very structured, very scheduled person. And so I feel like I need to have dinner done at a certain time. I feel like the house needs to be cleaned by a certain time. There's just, I like to be on a routine. And once I went back to work, the routine that I was on absolutely went out the freaking window and it just doesn't exist anymore. So I'm trying to find a way to do all of the things that I was doing beforehand now with a 40 hour work week kind of piled on top of it. And on top of that, Sean is home from school now. It is like full on summer vacation. And I feel so bad because I haven't done anything with him this summer. Usually we're at the lake, we're at the pool, we're going swimming, like not necessarily going and spending money, but we're spending time together and we're doing things outside. And I just have not had either the time or the energy to do it this summer. And it's the first summer. It's the first summer in a long time that I haven't been home. So it's just kind of like, I feel so bad. And I can tell my, that poor boy is so lonely because Stuart works as well. So Stuart's gone all day. And then by the time Stuart gets home, I'm going into work. So it's just, mm, it's awful. And then of course me and Mr. Hubby, we're not spending a ton of time together recently either. Though we're okay on that front because I think Mr. Hubby is really happy that he's not having to carry the whole load anymore. I feel like he was, he was, he was on the verge of a good burnout as well. I feel like he was really struggling with having to uh, be the sole provider and really having to carry the weight of all of the bills and things like that on his shoulders. So it definitely was time for me to go back to work and it's nothing but a good thing, but it's all just a little bit of an adjustment for us. So speaking of work, y'all, I love, I love, love, love the place that I work. It's fantastic. I love the customers. I love the job description. It's not like it's hard or anything. It's just a lot of standing. 
my body has to get used to it because I'm not used, my body has to get used to it because I'm not used to being on my feet for such long periods of time. Speaking of, I went and I ordered a pair of shoes off of the TikTok shop. I know, please let me know in the comments if you guys have seen those super viral neon tennis shoes. Y'all, I got a pair and I have, I, I have such wide feet, it's awful. I have chubby feet because I'm a chubby person. Those shoes are not made for chubby feet. They are made for very normal, slender feet, right? So I tried to put my foot in there and it was like, Ugh. it was a little bit of a struggle. I got it on and I wore it to work. And the more I wear it, the more the shoes kind of stretch out, but I spent money on them. So I'm not willing to like admit defeat. So I'll go to work and I'll have the shoes on. And by the time I get off, my, shoe, my feet hurt so bad because <laughs> they're a little bit small for my feet. I'm hoping though that I can get them stretched out just a little bit. Also, please let me know in the comments if there is a way to stretch out shoes. Like I don't have, I don't have a shoe stretcher or anything like that, but is there a way? Like, can I soak them in hot water? Like what can I do to help them stretch just a little bit more? Cause they're almost there, but I need just a little bit more for them to be truly comfortable and then they'd be perfect but they're nice. I feel like if you have normal sized feet, I feel like they'd be great because they are super, super comfy and they're so cute. Every time I wear them, I get so many compliments. People are like, your shoes are so pretty. I picked up the neon green pair and then I also picked up the lilac pair. So adorable. The lilac pair matches kind of perfectly with my work uniform. So I wear them pretty often. But let me know, is there a way to stretch them out so they're not quite so painful at the end of the day? So like I've been trying to say for the last 15 minutes, it feels like work is fantastic. However, I got into a teeny tiny bit of a kerfuffle with a little, a couple of the girls at work. So I would love some feedback. Let me know, did I do something wrong or are they in the wrong or what should I do to rectify the situation? So at work, we're all women. And we already know how that is. We already know how women are. Women are gonna gossip. They're gonna they're gonna be. We know how, we know how women do, right? I expected that going into the situation. And usually, it's really easy for me to get along with people. I am not a um, I'm not a confrontational person at all. I am a very like team team player, go getter, very happy be bobby person. Like I don't want drama. I, I like I don't want any part of it, right? somehow I got myself like right smack dab in the center of a big old freaking drama drama club circle thing it's awful anyway so I went into work and I think sometimes people take my attitude and my uh, happy personality and they take it like I'm gonna be easy to take advantage of and I am a very happy person and I will kill you with kindness but I'm also not going to let you walk all over me. I'm not going to be ordered around and I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take any crap. Like be underneath the very happy, fluffy exterior is a bull waiting to charge. Like I'm a little bit of a lioness. Don't push me because I, because I will take it there anyway. So probably was about my second week at work and I'm just kind of learning the ropes. And unfortunately they ended up having to hire like five or six people at a time because a bunch of people quit at the same time. So the actual training process was non-existent. They pretty much just threw me into the lion's den, den and said, figure it out. So I did. I'm a quick learner. I've been at worked in customer service. I pretty much know what I'm doing. So I was figuring things out as I was going. Now, under the guise of trying to be helpful, one of the, one of the ladies that I work with, she's much younger than me. And I remember being young and I remember, you know, I was very lazy and if I could cut corners, I would. So under the guise of her trying to be helpful and trying to teach me things, she was kind of, she was ordering me around and she was basically telling me to go do all the hard things so that she could that so that way she could just stand there and really not do anything. And I got kind of wise to it after the second or third time of of us working together and she was like, "Would you mind doing this? Would you mind doing that?" And other than this, it was it really upset me too, because other than that, we had been having such a great time together. We had a ton in common. We both really enjoyed reading. We both really enjoyed reading spicy books, things like that. So we had a ton of stuff to uh, to talk about. We had a ton of things in common, and I actually was really enjoying working with her. But then that one day. 
I was busting my butt. I had already like, I had already bagged all of the ice and I had done all of the heavy lifting. I had wiped all the counters down and I had swept and I had bagged ice and I had done all the hard stuff. And the only thing left to do was to go ch take the trash out, right? And it's the hardest part of the entire job because I work at a gas station. So there's like seven trash cans outside that you have to empty and they have to be emptied twice a day because they fill up really, really quickly, especially during the summer because we're a little bit of a tourist town. So we get a lot of traffic. So the, the trash cans were full. They were very, very full and it had rained a couple of days earlier. So they were like nice and juicy too. Just was not a pleasant task at all. I completely understand why she would want somebody else to go do it. The thing about that was though, is I had done it the day before and I had done it the day before that. So I figured, you know, I've done it the last two times in a row. I think maybe it's your turn to go do it. So I had gone, I just, we had just got through a little bit of a rush and I had told her, listen, I haven't had a cigarette in a couple of hours. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. And I was literally at the door about to walk through the door. And she said, oh, would you mind doing the trash while you're out there? And I'm going to go ahead and say, my, I'm going to admit my fault in the whole thing and say that I did not handle it as gracefully as I probably should have, especially with me being the older party. I didn't say anything, but I turned around and I looked at her and I chose not to say anything. I just looked at her, I turned around and I walked away. I did not answer her, I did not say a word to her. I just walked away and I went outside and I sat down and I smoked my cigarette. Now, if it were up to me, this would have been it because I had every intention of doing the trash. I just refused to answer her. If I would have opened my mouth at that period in time, at that point in time, I would have said something that I shouldn't have said. So I chose to keep my mouth shut and walk away. I sat down, I took a little bit of a breather, I smoked my cigarette, and then I had every intention of doing the trash as soon as I was done. Well, instead of her, I, I don't know what she was thinking. Instead of her realizing that, oh, maybe I overstepped a little bit, instead she calls the manager and she gets the manager to kind of like come after me. And up until this point, I'm thinking we're all friends. Like I'm thinking we're all great. We're having a great time working together. I'm allowed to not like something, right? I didn't say anything, I wasn't disrespectful. I didn't say I wouldn't do it. I just chose not to answer and I chose to walk away. In instead of her coming up to me and being like, I apologize or, you know, I'm asking you to do it because you know, X, Y, Z, like she could have said something to me, but instead she ends up calling the manager who was not even at the store. She ends up ha calling the manager and getting the manager to come from home to the store. And I had just got done smoking my cigarette. I had gone in to use the restroom and then I was headed right back outside to do said trash, right? Well, as I'm walking out of the restroom, I cut through because we're right next to a McDonald's, like same building. So I cut through McDonald's because it's shorter to get to the trash cans that way. So I cut through McDonald's. And then as soon as I step outside onto the McDonald's patio, here comes my manager literally sprinting after me. Like, please let me know in the comments if this would have, would have upset you too, because I was absolutely fuming anyway. So here comes my manager absolutely sprinting after me. And then all of a sudden I'm getting screamed at, like legitimately screamed at. And I genuinely don't know what I have done wrong. I don't know what I have done to offend anybody, right? Because I think I handled it pretty gracefully anyway. So here comes my manager sprinting after me. And then she proceeds to absolutely scream at me because I need, I, I need to check the trash and I'm not supposed to be smoking on the McDonald's patio, which I wasn't. Anyway, I'm not supposed to be on the patio. And then also the, the shirt that I was wearing was inappropriate. Guys, I've been at this job for, I wanna say going on three months at this point, and I have one work shirt, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys know like what, what working at a gas station entails, but it's, it's pretty dirty work, especially when I'm doing garbage and stuff. The shirt gets dirty. And I, I don't have time or the energy to sit here and wash that shirt every single day. So I wear it two or three days in a row and then I, our color is blue. So I have a blue t-shirt that I wear instead. Well, apparently that blue t-shirt was not, was not okay. So I got screamed at for wearing something that wasn't the uniform as well. 
mind you, when I got hired, I filled out a form and I ordered three shirts on top of the one that you're given initially. Plus I ordered a cap and I ordered a name tag, none of which I've received and all of which the price, the price for everything has been withdrawn from my paycheck. So I paid for it all, but I haven't received any of it yet which is a little bit of, it's a, it's a, it's a point of contention for me because I'm really irritated about that. Anyway, so she ended, she uh, proceeded to, to really kind of jump down my throat a little bit. And from that point on, I was done. I was done. After that, I made it my mission in life to do that trash every single day. So not only did I do the trash that day, but I also swept the parking lot and I made it take two hours. I probably in, in reality could have got it done in 30 minutes but she left in two hours and I made it a point to stay outside until it was time for her to leave. Cause I just, I could not face her. I could not look at her for her to go right to the manager and have the manager jump down my throat. And then, and then this is like the PS de resistance. This is like the, 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 the cherry on top. After I get done outside, I change the trash. I sweep the parking lot. I do as much outside as I possibly can. And then as I walk inside, she tries to smile at me and say, if you need me, I left my phone number. I just looked at her and again, I didn't say anything, but I looked at her and I walked the other way because at that point I was just so very angry. And not only was I angry, but I was super hurt as well because I thought that we were building a friendship. I realized at that point that we're not friends, you know, it, it was a big thing anyway. I realized at that point that we're not friends. She is, the, the potential for us to be friends no longer exists. If you're going to act that way and behave that way, I genuinely don't want to have a friendship with you. Like if that's the first place you go to, we're not the same kind of people, right? So that was very disappointing as well. And so I want to say this was maybe about two or three weeks ago, this happened. And since then, I haven't spoken a word to her. I... I, I haven't said anything bad about her. I haven't disparaged her in any way, shape, or form, but I haven't acknowledged her either. I refute, well, no, that's not true either. I have acknowledged her. I'm perfectly courteous to her. When I have to speak to her, I do, and I do so in a, uh, a very pleasant and polite manner. However, I don't go out of my way to talk to her. I don't go out of, my, out of my way to conversate or be around her because quite honestly, I just don't like her anymore. And that's okay. She's allowed to not like me and I'm allowed to not like her. However, we are in a professional setting and we have to behave professionally. And that is what I am doing. However, she has decided to take a much different route. And instead of her realizing that maybe mm, she handled the situation badly, like I realized I shouldn't have just ignored her and I shouldn't have just walked away. I should have said, listen, I don't think that it's fair for you to make me take the garbage out again when I've done it the last two times. I should have said something about that. Instead, I walked away and made the situation worse, just in general. So I fully acknowledge my part in the whole thing and the whole fiasco. Uh, anyway, anyway, instead of her acknowledging that maybe she did something wrong, she instead has recruited all of her, all of uh, her acquaintances at work. She's been there much longer than me, so she has recruited her friends at work to kind of try and alienate, alienate me. What she fails to realize though, is I'm not there to make friends. I am there because my family needs the money. I need the money to support my family. And if you don't like me, that's perfectly okay, but it doesn't matter to me because your opinion doesn't matter to me. And I know that that sounds really, really awful, but listen, hear me out. So the fact of the matter is, is her opinion doesn't matter to me. She isn't my friend. She isn't my family. She does not help me in any way, shape or form. She forfeited her that, that, that right or she forfeited that option the minute she decided to, to get me in trouble for something she knew was wrong. You're not my friend. Your opinion has ceased to matter to me. I will be polite to you and I will be courteous to you while we are at work. But after that, you, you don't mean anything to me. You don't. You, you just don't. And instead, she is trying to get all of her friends at work the, the, the very next day actually this other woman that I work with, uh, those two are, are kind of tight. And this other woman that I work with came up to me and was like, have you checked the trash yet? Just a whole lot of sass and a whole lot of attitude for absolutely no reason. 
So I was like, yeah, I've done it already. Like, <clears throat> I will play stupid for, I will play stupid all day long because it just makes people so mad, especially when they're trying to like mm, uh, jab at you and it just is missing every single time. I will play dumb. I'm, I'm so, so good at that. Just right over my head. And it's just complete and total miss. And it, it upset her very, very much. And from that point, I have just, I've just chosen to not engage. And I think that quite honestly, that's the best route of action. I've just chosen not to engage. I don't talk bad about her. I don't say anything about her. She's just, she's somebody who's at work that I speak to when I'm at work. And then when I'm not at work, she doesn't exist. However, it is really, really making her mad that I'm not upset. And so her and, you know, her friends and allies at work have started to try to spread, to try to spread very ugly rumors about me that I'm lazy or that I don't do my job things like that which is very obviously untrue and now that the uppers have said something to them because they're trying they were trying to get me fired I think um but they're not gonna fire me because obviously I'm good at my job and I do what I'm supposed to do all of that good stuff and now they're very contrite because I worked with that same woman I want to say yesterday I worked with that same woman yesterday and she tr she was trying to be kind and she was trying to strike up a conversation and kind of like extend the olive branch and while I wasn't rude to her in any way I very much let her know that I was no longer interested in being her friend she showed me exactly what kind of person she was and I don't have any room for people like that in my life right so I'm not holding a grudge. I'm just shutting it down. I don't want anything to do with you outside of work. I do not want to be your friend. I don't want to be rude and I don't want to feud with you either. But also that uh, that possibility is no longer it's no longer an option. Friendship is no longer on the table for us because you have showed me what kind of person you are. Now, in your opinion, am I handling this correctly or should I handle it in a different way? Like because I'm mm, I feel like I'm taking the high road. And I feel like I am kind of like, I'm trying to be very classy about the whole situation, right? Because I am way too old to be taking part in those high school games. And they are very high school because both of those women are much, well, it's three women. It's the manager, it's the, the one girl and her friend, right? So it's three women at work and they all three really, really do not like me, do not like me now. And that's okay. Not everybody has to like me. But instead of choosing to engage in the high school just ridiculousness, I've just chosen to ignore it. I go into work, I do what I'm supposed to do, and then I leave, right? But is that rude? Like, am I handling it the wrong way? Sometimes I feel like, should I, what should I do? Like, if you were in my position, if you were in my situation, what would you do? Would you try to strike up a friendship? Would you, like, extend extend an olive branch and just be like, listen, like, let's be friends? Or would you just keep it very, like, professional and just be like, we're good. Like, there's no drama here. I just don't want to be your friend. Like, how would you handle that situation? I definitely think that's the part of working and interacting with other people that I didn't miss at all. It's probably my least favorite part of the entire thing is just having to manage everybody else's attitude because it's just so much attitude, so much attitude. And I remember when I was super young like that too, I think she's maybe 23, 24. So I'm like twice as old as she is. So I understand it. Like I remember how lazy I was and you know, if I could get away with something, I was gonna try to get away with it. So I understand why she did it. However, I just, mm, as now that I'm older and understand that it's just, it's just not necessary, just go get it done and then everybody can be friends. And that's the, the road that I have chosen to take. I'm just gonna go get it done so that way nothing has to be said about anything. So now I have made it my personal mission to get that trash every single day. I make sure that I am the one that goes and changes the trash cans. I go sweep the, I sweep the parking lot. First of all, I enjoy it. Uh, I get my steps in. I feel like it's a workout. I also make sure to go when it's super hot outside. So I sweat my hiney off the entire time. Quite honestly, I feel like that's one of the reasons I've lost 18 pounds this month. So yay me. So there is good that comes out of the situation. Uh, you know, even if it's a, if it's a sucky situation, some good has come out of it. 
it's just it's never fun having to manage other people's attitudes it's just like my least favorite part of the entire thing now i'm not gonna sit here and say that the entire place is awful because it's not there are a few women there that i absolutely adore uh there is there are two in particular that i absolutely just love to pieces they're so nice and they both well they both stick up for me and they were both like firmly on my side uh, one of them is kind of like an older lady and not too much older than me, about 10 years older than me. And she's been there for uh, a little while, a little bit longer than I have been there. And she is just like this super no nonsense, very, she is very country, like in, in the best way. She's just like takes crap from nobody. She absolutely, she knows everybody. She's just kind of like a staple and she's great. She's absolutely a blast. Super catty, has a lot of, uh, a lot of attitude has opinions like has a stack of opinions about a, a mile long like and not afraid to say what's on her mind at all talking talking with her is always a blast and then there's another lady there and she is she is a southern belle you can she's very much like me I adore her she is very much an older version of myself super happy and bubbly uh very country as well but um she doesn't cuss but she's got all kinds of sass and attitude to her as well she's a blast too so there are a couple of people there that i really really enjoy working with it's just the couple of bad apples that can really ruin it for absolutely everybody and it's such a shame because i really went into the situation hoping to befriend everybody now, I already knew that it was going to be impossible to be friends with absolutely everybody because, of course, not everybody is going to like you. But I was super sad that just only a couple of weeks in, I've already kind of made uh, an enemy. Not an enemy, but, you know, I've made somebody who just distinctly does not like me. And that's super sad. Also, like on a completely and totally different note, y'all, I have never been hit on so much in my freaking life. I thought that that was not gonna, that was gonna be like a non-issue because like I'm a big girl and we all know how people feel about big women. Anyway, I go into work and I've always got my nails done and I've always got my eye makeup on and I'm cute and blah, 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 blah whatever, right? So I know my husband loves me, my, my husband thinks I'm cute, but for the most part, mm, that, that, that's about it, right? I get hit on so freaking much. You want to talk about an ego boost? Like, I, of course, don't entertain any of it. And a lot of it's just done in good fun. But I was standing there. I was working, I want to say, about a week and a half ago. And it was just about time for me to clock out and go home. And we were in the last rush of the night. And I have a mile, uh, I, have, I have a line of people a mile long behind my register. And this guy comes up and he puts his phone on the counter and he said, and he says, uh, I was like, what, what? I thought there was a coupon or something on his phone. I was like, what? What's going on? He was like, your number. Can I? Can I have your number? Y'all, when I tell you, I was so flabbergasted. I had no freaking idea what to say to this man. <laughs> I've been married for 14 years. I haven't flirted with anybody or like done that whole thing in so long. Like he put his phone on the counter, and I genuinely thought he was trying to show me a coupon or something. You know, like a digital coupon, whatever but no he wanted my number and literally the only thing i could think to do was show him my my wedding ring and be like i'm sorry i'm married and then of course i felt super bad about the entire situation so then i was like really really nice to him and also i think that it kind of gets misconstrued because i'm a very nice person and everybody is like hi how are you everybody is a sweetie honey darling very very southern kind of thing to do right so I, I speak to everybody that way and especially men that are not from here and don't know that that's kind of like the way that women talk. They kind of misconstrue that and they think it's flirting. So I came home and I talked to Mr. Hubby about it and of course I tell Mr. Hubby absolutely everything that happens at work. Everything from like the good to the bad and we get we get a good kick out of it, right? People come in, they ask me out, I tell Mr. Hubby about it and I'm like, mm, you should be jealous. He tells me about women that hit on him at work. It's kind of a thing, right? If you're an old married couple, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I go, I went home and I told Mr. Huck that. And I was like, am I too nice? And he was like, no, you just keep doing exactly what you're doing. You are a bright spot in people's day. If somebody wants to read too much into that, that's their problem and not yours. And I completely agree. I don't want to have to change who I am and the way that I talk to people because I'm afraid of 
you know, whatever. And also, I gotta be very, very honest, that guy took the rejection like an absolute champ. He was like, he kept, he continued to smile at me. I showed him my wedding ring. He was like, oh, okay, no problem, no problem. And he's come in a couple of times since then and has been very, very nice. So it wasn't a bad experience at all. And then you have people that come in and flirt because it's just something to do. And I, I kind of missed, I kind of missed that part. Cause like, if you have a job, you know, people flirt. It's just kind of a thing that you do at work. It helps pass the time, right? Not anything's really meant by it, but you have people, especially older men, like super older men, like I'm talking about 80 years old will come in and of course they ain't got nothing better to do. So they hang around the store for like freaking hours at a time, right? And they'll come in and they'll just give us crap for, I mean, for hours at a time or flirt with us or come in and especially play the lottery or the lottery. I have people that come in and play the lottery. They'll buy like 20, 20 tickets, just one right after the other and just stand there and talk your head off and play the lottery. And then when they're out of money, they go home and you know, they come back and they do it again tomorrow. It's literally a bill, right? Like they set aside this certain amount of money that they're going to use to play the lottery that day and the lottery. I don't play the lottery. It's the first time I've ever worked at a gas station. So everything's kind of new to me, right? But there are some people that are so serious about the lottery. Like they come in and they take their tickets so seriously, like the numbers that they pick, things like that. And if you don't get their ticket absolutely perfect, they get super, super upset. Or I had this one guy, very, very superstitious. And I was new, so he didn't know like what my luck was like, I guess. So he came in and he bought a ticket from me and he didn't win. So he bought another ticket and he didn't win again. So then I was bad luck. And every time he would come in and he would buy a ticket and I was there, I wasn't allowed to touch his ticket. Like he would reach across the, the counter and pick it up so that like I hadn't touched it at all, which I thought was like super, super funny. Like, of course I wasn't, um, What's the word? I wasn't offended by it at all. I just thought it was like, I mean, if if if, if you can, I mean, if if that's how you feel, that's how you feel, I guess. Um, but then I sold him a ticket once, and he hit on it, and he was very very happy. And since then, he's been super super sweet to me, and uh, I'm allowed to hand him his tickets now. So there's that. I guess there's an improvement there. But y'all, I have met some serious freaking characters, and I work in like there's three gas stations in my entire town y'all and I work at one of them and the one I work at is the only 24 hour one which is kind of insane anyway I meet some of the uh some of the most original characters I will tell you what uh every day at work it might be long and it might be hard but it is indeed never ever boring I never thought I would enjoy my place of work as much as I enjoy this one I really enjoy getting to talk to people every day and go out and be social. I just have to figure out how to, uh, I, I have to figure out how to manage my time a little bit better. I need to figure out a better sleep schedule for sure. And I also need to figure out how to split my time between work, household, and this YouTube thing. Cause y'all, I am almost on the verge of a very serious burnout. Like I can feel it coming. I'm burning the candle at both ends, trying to get everything done. And it's really just not possible. Like I need, I don't know. I don't know what I need to do. I don't know if I need to take a break or I don't know, but something's got to be done because I feel like I am, I'm running on empty. I'm running on fumes and I refuse to give up my YouTube and my makeup, things like that, because it genuinely brings me so much joy. I refuse to give it up. I just have to figure out a better way to fit it in. So if that means I need to cut down to like one video a week, maybe that's what I'll do and I'll post on the other socials when I can. I do want to say that I am so, so grateful for you guys, each and every single one of you. I want you to know that there are a few of you that comment on every single video and I see you. I might not have time to respond, but I see every single comment and every time I get a comment on one of my videos, it literally makes my entire day. There is one lady who comments and says the kindest things. And I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she wants to be called out or not. But she says the kindest things to me. And every single time I get a comment from her, it makes me smile so, so big. Uh, you know who you are and I absolutely adore you. Your comments are just absolutely just the, the light of my day. 
but this, uh, one of the biggest reasons I refuse to give this up like it's my community the people here are just absolutely the best ever so I just have to find a better way to kind of fit it all in I feel like somehow this chatty get ready with me turned into a teeny tiny bit of a rant so I hope you guys don't mind too much I did however have a blast chatting to you guys I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did this is today's finished look what do we think do we like it? Do we love it? I will be wearing this to work later. I am going to try and go take a little bit of a nap. I've been up all night filming, trying to get some work done. I hope you guys have a truly amazing rest of your day. Please know that I love you so very, very much. As always, no filters, no fancy lighting. It is just me sitting in front of my camera, playing with some makeup, chatting to you guys, hoping you guys are enjoying what I'm doing. If you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give it a big old thumbs up before you leave. As always, I love you so, so very much. And until next time, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and remember, you're important. Bye.